my microphone over here. We should be live now. Let me put my microphone a little bit out of the way so that it's not in my way while I'm working. And we are now live. Let me uh, grab the right windows here. <laughs> I didn't want to be late tonight, but I'm not 100% ready. <laughs> okay. It is Tuesday. I knew that. Mar April, April 2nd, 2024. My schedule is a little bit off because I was off work today and yesterday, which was pretty great. I got a lot done in terms of video editing for YouTube. And now we're going to get a lot done on the game. Let me shake up my energy drink here. I know I'm making a racket. And then we can get to it where we left off last week. And such a nice flavor. Okay. I'll give this a few seconds. Since we just started. Hello, Cash. How's it going? I don't even know what this was. This is a weird pose. How's life? How's things treating ya? Good? Uh, good on this end. I've been off for the past five days, which has been great. I had Friday off for Good Friday, and then I took today and yesterday off just to have a good five day weekend, and it was pretty nice. I got a lot of video editing and stuff done. So I'll have a new, I'll have the Dr. Robotnik short and long form video up, hopefully this week. They're both done editing. I just have to re-render a couple things. And I invested in some software to upscale video, which is pretty cool. So I could take my like shitty when I'm when I'm in the lower left hand corner, I can take that and upscale it now in in post, which is nice. I have to go back to work tomorrow though, which is no bueno. <laughs> I mean they probably need me for some things. I kept up with my email while I was out. Every time I check the uh, subscriber counter, it's going up. It just updates in real time and it just keeps going. Don't I work at home? I do, but I still have to wake up and do stuff for other people. <laughs> so when I phrase it like that, I guess it sounds selfish. Come on, budge. I know you're going to. You just did like a second ago. So that one game development short has kind of popped off, so I'm, I have a couple more I'm writing right now, but I haven't filmed them yet. I was planning on filming it today, but you know, when you take time off to get stuff done, you never get quite as much as you want to you done, which is okay. Oh, thanks for the follow, Lexvirio Live. I'll go ahead and hop in. Let's get some stuff done. So, tonight, let's make a to-do list. Uh, 
Uh, one, implement left, right bombs later in game. Two, fix targets spawning behind spike balls. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit more. So currently how it works is that um, targets spawn behind random bomb currently available. I want to, I'd like to take the spike balls off that list so that, because the problem we were having the other night was every time I got a target to clear the spike balls, it was behind a spike ball. Y'all shouldn't be reading messages from my girlfriend, so I'm gonna close Telegram. Um, let's also tweak spawn rates. To add more reds in. Oh, and then, uh, stretch goal. Add functionality to spawn more than one at a time. That's something I want to experiment with later in the game rather than it just speeding up how fast they spawn. Uh, once it gets too fast, that causes issues, so I'm thinking later in the game just spawn multiple at a time to make the game harder instead of just spawning faster. So let's get to it. Let's take a look at these. I think this looks pretty cool. We can add some like little hand art to the screen here. Uh, oh, I wonder if there's like a hand icon on the royalty free site that I subscribed to today. All images, a hand icon. We can just draw one, if not, these are all kind of bad. Yeah, we can draw a hand icon, but I'm not worried about it right now for testing purposes. We just want to see if this is fun before we put too much effort into it. We already got both made. Did we? Yes, we have R and L. Okay, that works. So that should clearly tell people whether they should hit with the right or left fist, unless they don't speak English or aren't familiar with these letters. <laughs> just thought we eventually need a hand icon, but just for testing purposes, this will be fine. like to change the position of this a little bit, move it up so it's more centered, I guess. That's just being a perfectionist at this point, though. Whoa! Mm. That looks pretty good to me. Take a look at our L. And move that up a little bit as well. All right, good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, 
Complementaries? Ooh, I just realized something. What do I do for the LEDs? I think we just take the red channel. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Maybe. We might have to do some magic in Photoshop, but that's okay. Let's just do a file, export textures, Unreal Mat name. Left, right, bomb, textures. Wow, it already knows where to put them. That's pretty cool. Roughness, emissive, normal, metallic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's change the directory though. Textures underscore left. Okay, thank goodness. I couldn't remember if I had it set to right or left currently. That would have been embarrassing. Now, file export textures, and then we can make a new folder for textures right. Export. Now, let's go ahead and boot up our Meta Quest developer hub. And then we'll also boot up the engine. I just want to get the device manager and everything up first. Uh, sure, I'll download your new version. Why not? Restart. Hell yeah. Why are you not connected? Alright, I had it plugged into the wrong USB-C port. We go through this every goddamn time on Discord DMs. I'll take a look. Twitter ad. How is that advertising Twitter? Hey, Dad, how's it going? 
Why is this not connecting? we go geez have to jump through hoops every single time <sighs> okay well now we can go ahead and launch the engine How's it going, Dad? to go so let's go to our blueprints enemies and let's make a new folder and call this left right I should have folders for all of these really but base is the parent class for all of these and I think that still applies so I'll go ahead and create a child blueprint and call this left right left right uh, enemy left right BP Click it. Have our collision. So let's take a look at what all we inherit from the base because it's been a minute. 
We have a location, a collision, and I believe <laughs> that's it. So I think what we really want to do here, where did that one go that I just made? Left, right, we can delete. I think we just want to take our regular punch bomb and duplicate it and call this one left, right. That'll save us a lot of work. Yeah, and I have all this functionality. Hell yeah. As the kids would say, if they were cool. So I think I want these ones. I'm just gonna make one enemy and then it'll randomly choose whether it wants left or right when it spawns. And we'll try that. And if we don't like it, we can always change it, I suppose. So we'll make a left-right map. So let's go ahead and shove the textures. Make a new folder, call this left-right bomb. And let's go find those there textures. Blue Ninja, how's it going? You've been following for three years, 10 months, and 28 days. Interesting. Documents. Game design. Punch bomb quest. Assets, enemies, left, right bomb, textures, left. Oh, we need a... Ah, uh, I probably don't need a folder for each. I can just rename these. So we have, um, been around for that long on Twitch. We are gonna run into an issue here. Let me uh, take a look at what we did. Emissive mask. Okay, so we're gonna need to do some Photoshop magic. We're gonna need to split our emissive into two textures. We only want to animate the LEDs. We don't want to animate the other random stuff. Oh, we'll take our emissive. Interesting. And we'll go ahead and just paint these black, I guess. How are you doing tonight, Blue Ninja? Why are you blue? I think I'm way funnier than I am. So we'll save this as a missive. And then... out 
go to our red channel, copy this, paste it, we'll merge these, go to our red channel, copy it, go back to RGB, paste it, and that'll be our mask. which we probably don't need this extra nonsense. Oh, this will just be left right bomb emissive mask. Because this will apply to both. Yo, yo, what's up? My boy Chris with the capital C. Oh, you got the wrong guy. I'm Chris with the lowercase c. Shit. I'm doing well, Ben's Law. How are you tonight? So then we should be able to take this. Nope. Close you. We have our emissive, we have our mask. So we need to go to the right textures. We'll call this right emissive. Uh, let me make sure the naming conventions are the same. We did left bomb. Let's do right bomb. Yeah, I chose a bad name and premise for this game for making YouTube videos about it. I wonder, like, how much it suppresses my content because I say the word bomb a lot since it's a mechanic in the game. <laughs> then the other ones can just be, uh... left right bomb because these are these are all the same we just have a separate emissive the same and the same everything else so let's go ahead and shove these textures in and also grab our right emissive bad Chris wrong stream <laughs> wrong Chris stream and then if we make a new material we can plug in our em our base color uh, we want to make sure that this is not sRGB we want it to be linear Plug this in here and take the occlusion roughness metallic. We don't care about the normal map because we're trying to save performance. You're good mostly. There's been too much drama at work. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's rough that you still have to work with her. I'm assuming that's what the drama is probably related to. I could be assuming wrong. You know what they say about assuming. So then, we'll take this and this and do a lerp. Uh, parameter. And we'll call this left, right, default value zero. We'll plug this into the emissive. Let's go ahead and grab the model. Let's 
delete the material. Don't give a shit about that. I mean, don't care about that. Haha. <laughs> Nice. And then if we change this to one, we get right. Nice. So now I just need to add the lights in. Which we need a vector parameter for. And we'll call this light color. I think. Let's just name it the same thing as the previous, honestly. So take a look at our punch bomb material which we have to find that do some detective work all right so we'd have LED color multiplied by our mask Trying to move on since within a couple days of the breakup, but it keeps getting dredged up somehow. That's not fun. Uh, we'll make this red by default, and then obviously control it within the bomb parameters. Multiply this by our mask. Emissive. Multiply. And then add. And that should give us our LEDs lit up and the ability to change the left right which is nice look at that looking pretty swell oh yeah now we have to program the functionality in You're making a game and you would like to have some tips, please. <laughs> what kind of what kind of tips are you looking for? I can give you like super generic tips like Golly gosh, gee willikers, don't give up, buddy. You got this. Game development is hard. Yeah, but you can do it. I don't know what kind of tips you're looking for. What vibe you going for the game? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a VR arcade game where you punch things, <laughs> and there's a leaderboard. <laughs> That's about it. It's an active punching. I can show you in a second. Organizing. Oh God, I'm the wrong person to ask for that. I, I do everything in Nodes in Unreal Engine pretty much. The last time I touched C++ was doing leaderboards for my. Uh, this game, like the old version of this game on Steam, and that was a nightmare. That was a goddamn nightmare. Got pulled aside by your boss to tell you it's the hot topic of the employees and they want it to stop. I don't know what to tell you. That's rough. It... Worst case scenario, I guess I, I, I'm not a I'm not a life advice person. I mean, I can be, I guess. With the life tips poster over there, life tips hotline. Um, thanks for the follow, whoever just followed. I appreciate you. Uh, you can always find another job, I guess. I don't know, man. It's rough. Breakups are hard. I don't know what to say. You're in computer science right now and you're working on web apps using Express, but you really want to make games. 
uh the best way to do it is to just download an engine and try <laughs> that's been my experience at least i've learned a whole lot since i started doing this i've also made several experiences now though um i started messing with unreal engine back in 2016 so i feel like i kind of know what's going on now almost all right so we need to add functionality so that this will spawn either randomly as a left or a right meaning you have to hit it with your left fist or right fist and if you hit it with the wrong fist it blows up that's the current goal if y'all are curious i can show you what the game looks like uh here i'll demonstrate with that hey goes on and there's stuff you have to duck under Anyway, you get the gist. Oof. Using Roblox Studio right now because it's all your laptop can handle. It's been fun to learn so far. It looks cool so far. Might wait. Uh, people figure out how to properly link the PSVR to Windows. Oh, this is a this is a Quest Three game. <laughs> Man, I wish the PSVR two uh, had more support. I don't have one personally, but I heard it's a really good headset. I wish it got more support. It seems like Sony's kind of left it dead in the water. So now I'm working on an enemy that you have to hit with a specific fist, which will hopefully make it harder for people to keep up with their combos. Because right now comboing is very easy. Whew, gotta catch my breath. I'm out of shape. Uh, 
Okay, so let's work on the logic for this. Go ahead and create a dynamic material instance from What did I call this? Let's throw it bomb mat. That's all right. Cool. <laughs> Set that to bomb mats. Compile. Save. Go to our event graph. Uh, spawn. Set that LED color to that. That's correct. Collision. Opening it a PSVR 2 to play help wanted to and for the new tech. The reason I would want it um, is too bad that it's tethered with a wire. The reason I would want it is for the cool controllers that have the adaptive triggers. The adaptive triggers on the PS5 controllers are so much fun. I'm a big fan of the PlayStation 5. Uh, we have a destroy bomb event. And then... Play the bomb spawn timeline and we play a sound cool cool looks good uh let's replace this model with the correct one so that that looks correct so we'll go ahead and select our mesh and do bam aha So then, on construction, which we'll actually do on begin play, I think, we want to set the actor rotation so that the screen is always facing the player. So that's a little bit of logic. Let's go ahead and plug that into the construction script, which we already did that logic. previously so we can just say get actor location and then we can get direction vector get unit direction vector from uh, let's split this out split this out split this out so from zero zero whatever height this is to whatever location this is. And that'll give us a direction vector. How far are you in development? Do you have a game design doc for it? I have a loose game design document. Um, I, I pretty much, it's pretty much like, in terms of functionality, most of it's there. Uh, now it's just, polishing, tweaking, and adding a couple things. In terms of game design doc, I'm remaking, and I have it all written down, but I'm, I'm essentially just remaking something I've already made, but better, and for the Quest 3. So I made this back in 2016 for the HTC Vive and Rift CV1, uh, and then, life bullshit happened and I wasn't able to work on it for a long time and then after life bullshit happened and I wasn't able to work on it for a long time everything evolved a whole lot since then like all the engines have changed a whole lot all the SDKs have changed a whole lot all the standards for VR have changed a whole lot I also now currently know how to develop a game in Unreal Engine a bit better than I did back then so I completely restarted from scratch for the quest a little like a couple years ago just working on it off and on uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing but um, game design document I've got I've got it all in notion kind of but I have a I mean I have all the timings and everything of everything and I have a big to-do list but I also keep thinking of ideas of things that I potentially want to implement so I don't know it's constantly evolving Uh, pretty much before release, the to-do list is um, one, uh, achievements, 
two, music, three, enemy, uh, tweaking. Like, I pretty much just need to tweak the waves, um, or the bags. And I want, there's some stuff I'm still messing with to make it more fun, but everything's pretty much there. At this point, it's just adding extra things and tweaking things. That was a really long answer to a simple question. So, make rotation from X, I guess? I don't know. I'm, I usually guess on this one. Vector math confuses me. Set actor rotation, target self, bam. Let's see if we got this right. And if not, I can cry a little bit. Or just rotate them more. Okay. Enemies. It's a very simple game. It's just uh, enemies appear, punch them away before they blow up. <laughs> oh, that's the one we're looking for. So, if we drag this around, it's rotated 90 degrees from where we need it to be. And the easiest way to fix that, <laughs> please do feel free to judge. is to just rotate the model 90 degrees. So now, no matter where this spawns, the screen will always be facing the player, so they'll know which fist to hit it with. Neat. Love looking through them and see ideas for them. Main reason you have two art books and a full... Oh, um, I don't have anything that's coherent to anybody else. But uh, I do have a bunch of notes from the previous game and stuff. Oh, that's the original version. Where did I put the quest version stuff? Oh, quest to do. Here's all my to-do list stuff and what I've implemented so far. And then... Those are shopping lists. Wrong thing. Where did my little note, the old game data? Uh, so I also have um, like all of my previous settings, like for what percentages of enemies spawned when, because that was all pretty successful. People liked the, the old version of the game. So I used that as a starting point for this one. Do some functionality. Let's make a custom event and call this choose left right. And we'll go ahead and add um, a Boolean, I guess, called since left right is either left or right, then we don't have to have multiple, we don't have to make like an enum or anything. Uh, and we'll just say <laughs> random man. I wish you, can you just, I wonder, uh, Random bull, hell yeah. Okay, nice. That makes my life so easy. So we'll set the left, right randomly. We'll say left is false, right is true. <laughs> I'm a lazy programmer. 
Uh, where will my game be available to play once it's done? I'm gonna sell it on the MetaQuest App Lab for cheap. It'll probably be currently subject to terms and conditions and or change. <laughs> currently, I'm planning on making it somewhere between like five and ten dollars, which is less than a Big Mac meal currently. So no one can complain about that. And they stay they still will, but no one's justified in complaining about that. So then we branch after we do our random bool. branch off of that and if it's false that's really affordable and not overpriced for no reason yeah cause I, it's a simple arcade game uh, if people like it I'll keep adding to it that's the goal I have I have lots of ideas for things I'd like to add to the game but first I just want to get version one done and release it and then if people like it I'll keep working on it and if they don't like it I'll say Oh man, and I'll move on to something else. <laughs> but I'll feel better about myself for finishing it. Okay, so we need to... What did we call... Okay, left, right. So we'll take our bomb mat, and we'll set our scalar parameter. which is titled left, right. Oh, we can also um, try this out on our construction script just to make sure it's working. So left, right, and we can set this to zero if false. And then uh, do the same thing but set it to one if it's true. Wow, neat. So then on our construction script, we can call our choose left, right. And we can see that in action. It's gonna flicker like crazy. Check this out. I think. Yeah, so it can be right or left. It's random when it spawns, neat. Wow. Cool. Neato. Good job, Chris. Hi, solo players. How's it going? So we've created this functionality. Now let's plug it all in to not our construction script. Let's just copy, let's just cut this stuff. Paste it on our event graph under begin play. We'll put it before the bomb spawn timeline. And we'll paste it. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. I didn't completely lose it. It just doesn't want to paste. Oh, there we go. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll do it right here. And now, if we test, so if we do a, if we do a test here, a little play test, just like in the viewport, simulate, that'll work. It should spawn facing the player and have a value associated with it. That, did not work. <laughs> Whoops. Let's uh if we this maybe if we do a play test rather than a simulate. Sometimes if you do simulate things are broken because it's missing variables. Nope, okay, something's off. Let's see what's going on. Mm 
So we should be changing the scale from zero to one. That's correct. Oh, wow, I'm dumb. Okay, that makes more sense. What happened was I didn't have a thing connected. I'm gonna go ahead and simulate again. Nice, okay. This time it chose left, and it is facing the player, and it will blow up. Cool. Neat. So, all that functionality works. Now we have to make sure they only punch it with the right fist. Or the correct fist. So, this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. So first we ask, okay, here's the logic we're going to use, maybe. Give me a second. Sometimes I have to sit here and think. Gotta use my noggin. Ow. All right, so first things first, we want to branch and we wanna ask, left or right? Then we wanna ask, Okay, first things first, we wanna ask, was this hit with a fist? That's correct. Then, we want to ask, is this left or right? And then after the left or right, so if it's left, which is false. We ask, does the other component have tag? Component has tag. Fist L. And we branch. And then we do the same thing for fist R. I need to make sure my tags are correct. And I need to make sure that these tags exist under my player character. It'd be really cool if I knew where my pawn was. Okay, fist left collision. Tag. Fist L. Cool. That's correct. Fist R. That's correct. Neat. Back to our logic. We're doing some logicking. You bet your bottom dollar we are. <laughs> okay, so then we branch and we ask Does it have fist R if it's a right fist? Because we're saying left is false. We're gonna put this under a category and called left false right true just so we uh know which is which because I'm being a lazy programmer and using a boolean instead of an enumerator. So 
So if this is right, if this is the right fist and it has the tag fist R, then we do the collision nonsense. Same for the left. If it's the left fist and it has tag fist L, then we do the collision nonsense. Otherwise, we go down an alternate path, which will say die, scum. Yeah, I guess we just uh, detonate. If it's the wrong fist. Neat. Okay. This should work now. I don't think we have to do anything additional. So let's, uh, test it, I guess. Means I need to go to our spawner. We go to our game mode. Spawn bomb, okay. So we select an enemy. <laughs> I need to make sure we're using the correct bag. Bag list V3 looks like the correct current one. So let's. Set these all to left, right. Just for testing, I promise. And let's uh, build. So we can just uh, click the platforms and the little quest three. And that should build. And then we'll test it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a beta cast here so we can see when it's up. That's not promising. here okay shit Well, 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 that didn't work at all. Um, we missed something big time. Right now, the only correct fist is the right fist.
Okay, first we asked if it's a fist. Then we ask left, right. Left is false. more sense for being honest So let's look at our regular enemy to see how it collides with targets. Cause right now this one's bouncing off and that's not cool. Oh. value fist do that stuff maybe that logic is under the targets it's been a minute since I've looked at all this Yeah, this is not a great way to handle this. <laughs> but, oh well. Yeah, this is a horrible way to handle this. Um, but I suppose it works. at my front door. Wow. My Amazon package just came in at 8 p.m. The heck in hell? It's pretty interesting. Let me see what just came in. Amazon at 8 p.m. I know, right? My orders. What got delivered? Delivered today. Oh, it's the birthday present that I bought for um, our friend's one-year-old. Our friends are having a birthday for their one-year-old daughter on Saturday. And I bought them a gift from their Amazon wish list. Yeah, I was just checking my email. Oh, first of all, this should work now. Um, I guess I'll test it. 
random, but best browser. I use Chrome because it's what I'm familiar with. My brother likes Edge and he's a professional software developer or a professional like web developer. Apparently Edge is pretty good now. Um, I keep saying YouTubers chill out for Opera, but I haven't tried it recently since high school pretty much. No one uses Opera. <laughs> I've seen so many YouTubers like shilling out for it. They probably get a pretty big bag for that. Do you use Opera? Well, this should work. Uh, you wanna see something cool though? So I bought a tool this afternoon called Topaz that lets me upscale video. So I'll show you an example because it's pretty cool. So upscale test. So this is the video that I want to upscale. It's 400 pixels by 300 pixels and it looks pretty rough, right? Like look how rough that looks. I had to, I wanted to upscale this for my Dr. Robotnik video because this is the video from me being in the lower left hand corner. So if I do output resolution four times upscale and change this to iris and then set, I want to set this to the, you set to original and then you. Uh, how do I unset this from original? Oh yeah, four times upscale. Okay, there we go. So then set this to iris for face. Check this out. I'm gonna hit preview. It does like a surprisingly decent job. I tried the trial and was like, okay, I'm buying it. Like look how much more detail it has in the face now. And this is like a tiny ass video. We got some hair detail. Like it's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. It's obviously not as good as just recording at full resolution, but. It can only do the few frames that it's previewed right now. But I have the clip rendered out. Um, so if I go to shorts, Dr. Robotnik, Kim Possible, upscale test. So this is the upscaled, and, th and this is upscaled from like 400 pixels, so it's pretty damn good. Like obviously not perfect, definitely some artifacting, but way better than, way better than the original, which looks like this mess. Like, look how much sharper this is. How much was it? Uh, $2.99. But also, it has all these other features like motion de-blur, stabilization, frame interpolation to do slow-mo stuff. Um, and it's a one-time license. It's not a subscription, which is nice. Yeah, $2.99. But it's a lifetime license, which is uh, worth it for me. I'm probably gonna be using this a bit. At least it's one time, that's hefty. Yeah, software's expensive, but I mean, just think about how much I've spent on Adobe throughout my life. I spend like 30 bucks on that a month. I've spent more on After Effects plugins, um, for sure. 
and this will be useful for all sorts of things but i thought that was really impressive you can also mess with the settings more Ooh, manual fix compression Thought you meant two dollars and ninety nine cents at first. God, I wish. Sharpen all the way. I'm just curious what pushing the settings all the way does. Anti-alias slash de-blur. The sharpening is way too much that I did. What's D Halo? I'm just gonna say everything. Everything all the way up. The de-haloing is way too strong. I look like a painting. A ghost. Apparently the Avatar The Last Airbender quests for Korra um, are in Fortnite now, which is pretty cool. I'm probably going to go play that after stream. Wow, somehow me going to manual and then back to auto just fucked it. that mess in months my only issue with fortnite currently is the uh yeah, my only issue with fortnite currently is the snipers i thought that was neat so worth sharing Oh, and then it also comes with an After Effects plugin, so you can do all of that from within After Effects. Okay, this should work. Let's test it. I also said it would work last time. I uh, will say done. Implement left right bombs. And let's go and test. So my main complaint about Fortnite since 2018. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, but... <laughs> but the current Reaper sniper rifle has multiple bullets in the clip has gigantic fucking hitboxes. It is the easiest goddamn gun to get headshots with. There shouldn't be a gun in the battle royale that kills you in one hit. There should be zero guns in a battle royale that do 250 damage in one hit that easily. Because to put it in perspective, you get right up on someone, point blank, hit them directly in the face with all of your shotgun pellets. They still don't die in one hit. 
Sniper, they don't even know you exist from 200 meters away and you're just going straight back to the lobby. Dumb ass game design. That's definitely my second a day. <laughs> no, I just punched my light. You've heard this argument legitimately a hundred times. Yeah, but the Reaper sniper rifle has multiple bullets in the clip. The bolt action and the heavy sniper rifle don't, at least. So you get one shot and then that's the chance you get. But with the Reaper sniper rifle, it's boom, missed, boom, headshot, like that fast. It's crazy. It's way too powerful. It's more powerful and more bullshit than any sniper that's ever been in Fortnite. And all snipers in Fortnite are bullshit and don't belong there. It's bad game design. Okay, well, our thing works. I punched my light, but, you know things happen <laughs> so those work oh that's my uh that's my timestamps for the video i'm releasing um either tomorrow or thursday so now i need to fix targets spawning behind spike balls that's gonna be a little bit more difficult Now, I think what we're going to do is keep track of all of the bombs that are currently on screen in a list that aren't spike balls. Fake outs are fine to spawn targets behind. That's whatever. Um, mess with people a little bit. So let's look at our target spawning logic, which means game mode. Spawn power up. So we're getting all actors of class. Punch bomb base and I think that's wrong. My cat is meowing at my door. Oh, oh, it's not time for food yet. She's just trying to trick me. Hey.
So I think Uh Oh, we can just, here's what we can do. So we can, um, oh, I just opened the wrong thing. I was trying to open paint so I could draw. So what we can do is, I don't know how I was gonna draw this. That was a bad idea. Forget that. <laughs> what we can do is get a list of all bombs. Uh, go through that list and add only non-spikes to an array. Spawn target next to one of those at random. So just do one filtering step between grabbing all of the ones that are currently available to spawn a target next to. That's easy enough. So, first of all, we ask, um, is the length greater than zero? And that's a good thing to ask. Ask if there are any valid bombs to spawn next to you. Then, power up bombs, what is that? We clear our list here, and I guess we go through, ask if they're punched, and add them there. Okay, so we're going to add another array. Put this under power-ups, and we'll call this... Um, We will duplicate this and call this um, current bombs, no spikes. Yeah, that's a long variable name. So We'll take this and do a do a for each loop. Then once that's completed, we'll do this. And we'll do a for each with um, the current bombs, no spikes instead. And in this loop, we will go through All right, first we'll take our current bombs, no spikes and clear it. Then, we will do a branch and we'll ask if the current array element equals, um, don't punch. does okay let's say uh does not equal 
so that the true condition will be what we want to happen. Okay, so if this, if if the current one that it's looking at does not equal the spike fall, then we get our current bombs no spikes and we add the current element. Hooray! Neat. So that does like one extra filtering step. So uh, I will comment this and say, make a new array without uh, spike balls. Holy moly, my cat is meowing and she sounds sad. All right, that's number two on our list. I'm pretty sure that'll work. No guarantees. Uh, add functionality to spawn more than one at a time. How old is she? Um. Maybe three or three and a half. It was estimated that she was about two when we found her. Based on her teeth health and stuff. Um, it was est the vet estimated around two ish years old when we found her. She was a stray, so. When did I find her? It wasn't last year, it was the year before. Uh, no. 2022. So I guess she's about four now. She definitely has separation anxiety. She mouths at my door at least for a little bit every day.
It does all a bunch of math to figure out where to spawn the target based on the bomb that's chosen. Okay, enough talking to myself, I suppose. off of this bag. There's 15 in there, so it's only 10 in this bag. I'm gonna put more don't punches. up the combo bombs, lower the punch bombs, up the don't punch, or up the fake outs. I'll go ahead and start introducing the left right ones here as well. I'll add three of those. Index making the single punches so common this late in the game. That should be less common than the combos.
probably want to loop through this wave once. Speed up the game a little bit. Uh, and I need to go feed the cats. So I guess I have like four minutes. How are you? I'm pretty good, Jeff. How are you? I'm about to go feed my cats here in a second. We're gonna play test this in a little bit. Procrastination is killing you slowly. What are you procrastinating on? Goof good. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go feed my cats. I'll be right back.
Okay. I've returned. You're just gonna go do the thing you need to do. It's some wiring. I thought you said writing at first. Keep stream running in the background. I appreciate you. I need to think about the best place to implement the multi-spawns. Get that glorious watch time. That's what I'm going for. That's like 90% of the reason that I stream <laughs> twice a week right now is trying to get the watch time requirement for monetization. That's also why I'm releasing any long form content at all. The shorts are doing really well, but getting monetized based off of shorts is almost impossible. You have to get 10 million shorts views in 90 days, within 90 days to get monetized off of shorts. Why you don't stream for us? Wall, this is awkward. <laughs> Man. Ah. put the how do I decide if it's gonna spawn multiple at a time where do I want to decide that that's a tricky one Let's 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 uh let's think through the functionality that we want here. No, so the content strategy, by the way, for this channel in the first place was uh, shorts and live streams. I figured I could do shorts to bring in viewers and live streams because they're fun. Live streaming is what I enjoy doing the most. Uh, just hanging out with people while working on cool stuff or playing games or whatever. That's what I've enjoyed the most since I started streaming forever ago. Um, I figured shorts to bring people in, live streams to get the watch time requirement to monetize the channel. And the problem being, most people aren't really interested in watching game development or CG stuff live. They'd rather just watch the shorts and sh converting shorts viewers over to live is very difficult. So I don't think streams are going to be the right course to get the watch time. So that's why I'm doing the long form um, stream challenge videos currently. Once I get monetized, I'll probably just focus on shorts and streams. Um, Cause I could make a little bit off of shorts. Shorts brought you here. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, so that was the content strategy for the channel from the beginning of the year. And also, I mean, the, like, the number one reason that I'm doing this at all is because it sort of forces me uh, to have specific time to focus on my game. Um, sort of forces me to get stuff done, which is great. That's the real reason. But monetizing on YouTube would be great too. So the content strategy was shorts and live streams. Man, okay, so let's walk through this a little bit. I'd like to, once the game gets fast enough, 
start spawning multiple at a time. That's the gist of what I want to accomplish here. So we have a few options as to where we can place that logic. So we could place the logic uh, option one. Let's say where to place the logic. Option one. Um, put it on the animated chart for bomb spawn intervals. So I have I have a timeline. Put it on the I'll just say time put it on the timeline for bomb spawn intervals. The the current um, interval between bomb spawning is set on a timeline. So I could say once uh, put a marker on the timeline to set a boolean that turns on multi-spawn. Option two would be put it on the bags themselves. The game naturally progresses through the bags. So the game gets harder the further you get into the list of bags and then it loops the last bag, whatever that ends up being. So, we could say, um, add an integer for amount to spawn at once. Add an integer for maximum amount to spawn at once. Add an integer for minimum amount to spawn at once. And then we could choose between that range. Like a weighted random, so it's weighted more towards less. I kind of like that idea. Um, have a maximum minimum amount to spawn at once. It would usually be between one and two. But once it gets later in the game, we could have it potentially spawn like three in a row or three at a time, even. Should make the game really hard. Well. This is an enemy bag V2. It's probably under our blueprints. It's a struct, I believe. Did I save that? I'm not the most organized person in the world. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I uh, did not see the chat. Could you do it percent based? So first bag would have a small chance of two plus to spawn and that increases per bag. Yeah. For the first couple bags, just one at a time probably. Up to here is where it would start to get more variable. Um. I don't know how to do weighted random <laughs> in, in nodes. I wonder if there's a good guide on that.
gonna have to figure out how to weight it. How I used to approach um, percent chance. Let me think through this. Usually I'm not this stuck. This is a tricky one. Weighted random is tough. I don't know how to handle that. I mean, what we could do So we know how many no, we don't. I'm thinking through this, so... I can't imagine... For a second, I thought I was wearing my pants inside out. That was awkward. Um, I can't imagine wanting to spawn more than three at a time. That would be very difficult for the player. I was just lifting my shirt to make sure the waistband was facing the right way because the seam on my leg looked like it was inside out for a second. I'm losing my mind a little bit here. Ooh. For example, you in a simple way. So I could add like all of the different possible amounts that could spawn as values and then add weights next to them, like out of 100%, for instance. And then make an array with whatever percent. So like do it out of 100, just add it up to 100% or whatever. Um, make an array, put that many ones for whatever percent there are in the bag 
put that many twos to that many threes to that many fours to that many fives. But that's a lot of extra data to add to the bag struct. So maybe we could do we are castaways maybe what we could do is um add an integer I don't know that banger. Man. I don't know how to do weighted random. Get a random chance with the specified weight. So you can do like a weighted bull. That's cool. I wonder if there's other stuff that's weighted. Let's just type weight. Random bull with weight. That's useful then. So we could set a weight for, um, Here's what we could do. Add a weight parameter for multi-spawn. Then add maximum amount to spawn. And then if multi-spawn returns true, then we choose a random number 
in the range. of two to the maximum. I wish I could wait that though. Challenging. Y'all are straight watching a 33 year old man have a mental breakdown trying to figure out a weighted random solution. It's like, we could have the later bag spawn five at once, but make it extremely rare. But I don't know how to do that. in this solution all right so to this structure Amount, a loop amount, a wave start, then an array for enemy versus quantity. Could add another structure for. Because then we <laughs> end up with another array of potential amounts. And what their weight is.
Mad Max. Well, let's go ahead and add a multi-spawn weight. And we'll set this to a uh, float. So now... Under our spawner, sorry for how complicated I'm making this uh, multi-spawn weight zero zero let's say like a point two I got 20% chance uh, point three and then once you get to the end here like point seven five Turn the enemy. So here's another. <laughs> God damn, this is going to be really hard. With the current implementation, it's going to be very difficult to spawn more than one at a time. I'm realizing. I think I'm just gonna play test the game for a little bit here and then call it a stream and I'm gonna put some real thought into how we wanna handle the multi-spawn. So you put it on the bag, the problem is the bags are only accessed within this function Oh, here's what we could do. Um, we could return an array of enemies to spawn, which will usually only be one. Yeah, this is gonna it'll, it'll take some reworking. We'll probably do this on Saturday or something. Definitely take some reworking. Not enough time to handle this tonight. But here's what I'm thinking. We can uh in our okay, function function to select an enemy to spawn. Update it to return an array of enemies to spawn. Hey, Tuxie, how's it going? What's up, Gasman4231? We can update it to return an array of enemies to spawn, uh, which will usually only be one. But that way we can, oh, I have a uh, restream chat up. I appreciate the raid. Um, shit, <laughs> now there's people here. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chris. I'm making a game. Thanks for the raid. 
do the roar. Roar. So we can update it to return an array of enemies to spawn, which will usually only be one. But this will give us an option to have the multi spawn up to whatever amount we want. This is definitely going to be something that we are tackling on Saturday to implement multi-spawn. That's too much to handle tonight. But we'll return an array right here instead of a single enemy to spawn. And then the spawner will go through the whole array. How's the game coming? I guess I'll demonstrate what we have going currently. So I will go ahead and build out for the quest three. Oh, I have to save stuff. And it'll launch here in just a second. I appreciate the raid, Tuxy. Uh, I have the, what happens is I have the restream chat up so I can see both YouTube and Twitch chat and restream chat doesn't tell me when I get raided. I guess I should just have Twitch up as well. Oh, this is building and we'll test it and then Fault. Oh shit, is my little robot full? Deploying. Oh shit, it's 95% full and the litter's low. I gotta handle that after the stream. Twitch really made a comeback. I don't know. They're all just streaming platforms. <laughs> I'll see how this feels. My floor is definitely off. I'm short. That's not the game's fault, though. That's the Oculus's fault. Let me uh, go to my settings. There we go.
longer. Ah, that got hard. <sighs> Hi, Rabal. How's it going? Ah, that was a workout. Well, that's what the game looks like currently. <laughs> so, the left-right ones definitely make it more challenging, which was the goal. Because let's say you're on a combo streak, a left one pops up, but you have to hit with your right fist to get the combo. You have to wait for something else to spawn, hit that, then quickly hit the left one. So that's exactly what I was hoping for. The left right ones are very fun. I like that. Um, other notes. Uh, bug with the split ones. Oh, um, bugware targets are still spawning next to Don't Punch. It's looking good. I appreciate it. There's a bugware targets are still spawning next to Don't Punch. Also, how's it going, Penguin Cosplay? We only want targets to spawn next to the ones that you can punch. So you don't want people to just sit there and stare at a red spike ball with a target they can't hit. Um, play test notes. Bugger targets are still spawning next to don't punch. Um, add a map. Which that sounds dumb, I know, but p picture like the like the Dragon Ball tracker in Dragon Ball Z. So add a map to the scoreboard that shows player facing direction and bombs on the field, so no one feels lost. Uh, they'll they'll know if something is there that they're supposed to punch. That's something I'd like to do. Um, or other notes that I had while I was work while I was playing. Uh, work on laser frequency. 
add spinning lasers. Oh, too many reds at the beginning. Uh, potential thoughts. 50 to 60 percent chance to spawn. Um, guaranteed punchable ball when spike ball spawns. Um, length and time left right bombs are available to punch and so you don't have to break the combo by being forced to punch it before it blows up. Maybe you just make it stick around for an extra second or two. Bug with the split bombs. Um, bugs with the split bombs that need to be fixed. I uh, appreciate the follow, Caleb. So bugs, the first bug is um, not always calculating fist leaving overlap. So how it works is you overlap it splits out into multiple bombs, then you unoverlap, and then you can punch them. But for some reason, it's not always calculating leaving overlap uh, to turn collisions back on. And then the other bug is um, it'll sometimes spawn a split bomb where it shouldn't, meaning that it splits out into the hitboxes of others, which is bad. You need to make sure that they can only spawn where they have enough area to split out. So, that's what I got from tonight. It's currently 2.32. Oh, we've been live for 2 hours and 32 minutes. Jeez, wow. Okay, wow. I am brain dead. I'll be back for a much longer stream on Saturday where we will address some of these issues and add the multi-spawn functionality. Other than that, I'm going to go play some Fortnite, <laughs> and I hope y'all have a good rest of your evening. Thank you again for the stream, Tuxy. Sorry I didn't stick around for longer. I think I'm gonna end right there. I'll be back on Saturday morning with more stuff. I should have a new video and short up before then on YouTube for the Dr. Robotnik speed sculpt that we did the other weekend. That was pretty fun. Awkward wave. Thanks everybody for hanging out. See you next time. Maybe, allegedly. <laughs>